Hi, in this module, I'm going to show you how to create a very simple patch, which is going to start to get you used to the controls available in the Pulse Engine section. So we're going to start off by initializing the preset, which we do again by clicking on the preset section here. Let's go to the browser, and then you can find it right at the top. It's the first one here in it. So if I select that, then we can hear what it is. Initialized patch is basically the instrument stripped down to just function in a very simple mode. So it'll be with a synth, it's normally just a sawtooth waveform. So you can see all we've got here is the A side turned on and we've got a sawtooth waveform, but there is some modulation going on, which is with this main rhythm section here. So we don't need to worry about this top part here. So if I click on advanced, we can go to advanced mode where we can see the full pulse engine section and all of the things that are going on there. So as you can see, um, what we have below here are the modulation amounts for this main rhythm section. There are two, two different rhythm sections. Only one is being used here. So the second one is turned off. And the first one is set to the first mode, which is wave mode, where it acts like an LFO which is a low frequency oscillator or waveform that has its frequency low enough for us to hear it going up and down. And at the moment, it's being used to modulate the volume, as you can see by this amount here. Turn up to max, you can hear the volume going up and down. Until I bring it down to zero when it's not having any effect anymore. So what we could do now is use this to modulate a different parameter. We've got the pan here. Or we could engage one of the sections down here and modulate them instead. Now, because we're kind of making a bass patch here, what I might what I'd like to do is actually bring down the pitch a bit. So I can use this tune setting here to do that. So now we've brought it down 12 semitones, so it's an octave lower. It's more in the bass register. And I might fatten up, fatten, sorry, fatten up the sound a little bit too with these sections here. So we've got some tube distortion. And then also this bite section, which really, really gives it a lot more top end content, which is what I'm after. So now I can use the filter to, to roll it off initially. The filter is this section here, again, turned on with the power switch. And now in its default low pass or high cut mode, all I have to do is roll the cutoff down to cut out more and more of the high frequencies until we're just left with the bass. And now to use our main rhythm modulator to shift this cutoff up and down, what I have to do is click on filter, as with many of these sections here. If you click on them, you can see the modulation amounts turning on and off or rather the display of them. So now we can see just how much the cutoff and resonance of the filter are being modulated and can then turn them up. So if I turn up this upper one here, we can have the cutoff being shifted up and down by our oscillator. So now we've got that classic LFO bass style effect. And if I want to, I can change the timing. Or I can change the waveform by clicking on shape here. And we have loads of different waveforms to choose from, ranging from the simple types all the way up to these very complex ones if we want the cutoff to shift up and down in a crazier pattern. I'm going to keep it to a simple one here that's just a little bit more sawtoothy. And the only thing is, we might also like to have it uh, not start straight away, but actually use this setting here to have it fade in instead. So if we click unlock, what we can do is we can then add a fade in amount. So as we increase it, you can hear we get the LFO effect fading in over nearly 700 milliseconds there. So 
So that's a nice feature. Only problem is, uh, at the moment when I, when I play a note, it's starting off quite quiet because the filter is closed. So what we might do instead is use the filter envelope amount to modulate that filter cutoff up when I play a note um, and then have the LFO take over after the envelope is done. So to have that happen, all we have to do is turn up the ADSR amount and then use the timing controls here to set how this envelope works. So if I first just turn off our main rhythm, then you can hear if I have the attack set to minimum, also sustain set to minimum, and the amount set nice and high, and we can use the decay time to set how we want this, this filter slide when I play a note, how long we want it to last for. So with the attack set to zero, it's gonna jump up nice and uh, high when I first play a note immediately and then the decay time will set how quickly it slides back down. Somewhere around there might be nice. So now we've got this envelope sweep going on. When I play a note, and then we'll have the LFO fading in whilst I'm holding it down after the envelope is done. A bit longer, maybe. So we have our simple patch, and just as a little recap, there, if I turn off these sections, all we had is our simple sawtooth waveform, which is the default initialized patch being created on Pulse Engine A here. All I did was transpose it down an octave so it's in a lower register. Then we added some distortion to make it fatter, a low pass filter to roll off the uh, top end or high frequencies. An envelope to have this cutoff modulate down for it or jump up and then slide down as I play a note. And then because of this um, cut off. Uh, uh, yeah, we need to turn this on first because of this uh, cut off modulation being turned up nice and high. Then our main rhythm modulator is also modulating the cut off with a little fade in here of uh, almost a second after we play a note. So that's just starting to get you used to the uh, different uh, things that this pulse engine section can do. In the next module, we'll be using both sections to create another simple patch, but with uh, two quite contrasting things going on with the main rhythm and second rhythm sections. So we'll see you then.